Hello and welcome to lesson number 8.2. We will talk about raster visualization today. And we will start right off with the SRTM file that is shipped along with the exercise data for this tutorial. And you might see that there's there, there are no, not so many colors seen. So this is a black and white image or gray grayscale image. And um, currently it is set to, well, maximize the visual impact by saying so i mean make a stretch for the for the values from the lowest value to the highest stretch to minimum maximum the lowest value in this image is zero and the maximum number is 1548 but if you have a look on the on the source or in at the information pattern you can see that this is 16-bit signed integer what does this mean? 16-bit signed integer. Okay, 8-bit is 0 to 255. 8-bit signed is minus 128 to plus 128. 16-bit integer is something different. So we have values from minus 16,000 up to plus 16,000. And if we go with the symbology tab and switch off to no enhancement at all, we would like to see the raw data then the data is treated as it is so values with minus 16000 will be displayed as black and plus 16000 will be displayed as white let's have a look what happens to the image click on apply you can see it already in the thumbnail up down there we will see gray just gray so how can we improve this of course we will say well take the lowest number in the data as black take the highest number as white and said so we will use the stretch to min max here for the visualization sometimes you have some spikes in the data oh what was happening here did i miss something go with stretch to min max apply there we are sometimes you have spikes in the data like really high values which you would like maybe not to overemphasize in the image so um, what you can do then you can decide well I would like to go with some cumulative count that set is that you will treat the upper 2% and the lower 2% as one class so you can see that uh, there are values or the upper 2% are quite they are white now we can deal with this later on and so this is now another representation and you can go with min max of course so this is now total stretch for minimum to maximum and we are using here not the maximum value in the data which is 1619 ish or something like that but we are using here 1700 in a rough estimation we can apply another value like 1700 or let's go with 1500 right let's have a look what happens then not so much if we go with 1000 everything that is above 1000 will be treated as pure white so by doing 500 most of the image will be pure white right but you can see the value is quite good then but once again we will switch this back to 1600 and this is always a little bit a problem to beginners and uh, to GIS that is value against the visualization of a value so these are two different concepts first of all I just have a number that is according to the height right so this is a height and measurement but there are different ways to visualize this number currently we are using simple band gray right black to white this is a color gradient we can switch it over and make an inverse visualization totally unused for the normal people but you can do that it's just a representation right and then there are different ways of, of dealing with the data as well so we can use single band pseudo color that means that i will take a value and assign it to a very specific rgb value here so now we are using continuous we will increase this to equal interval let's say with uh let's have noise class breaks maybe this say classify apply and now i have a color code right right click here invert color ramp once again click on apply that looks a little bit more familiar to everyone right um so there are different ways of visualizing these data sets 
take into account. There are really a lot of people colorblind. So if you're going with such a gr green, red visualization, be careful, maybe switch to Idris or something like this. Here, or Viridis. Because this might be more familiar or easier to look at for colorblind people. And um, so there are different ways of visualizing. But now we do have still, we still have one problem. There are values of zero, right? And now we are dealing with those values. We can see those and we would like to make them not visible at all. The main problem with this now is if we are having real DEM values, because these are missing values, right? There's no information given, but it is coded as zero. And that's an that's an issue because sometimes if you're if you're not in a mountainous area but on plain flat or near the shore or whatever, you have real height values of zero. You will make them non-visible as well. By saying non-visible, how can we achieve this? We will switch to the tab transparency, and we can add here a value that should be not visible. We will go from zero to zero and say. I don't want to see those value. There they are. Now they are gone. Let's click on OK and add the base map to our current view. And by base map, let's maybe not take the open street map base map, but let's have a look here on the on some Landsat layer. If that is if it is working. No, it's not. So we will go with a Bing layer, Bing satellite. And the SRTM layer, I, I would not like to see it in this uh, color code. I would like to have that in single band gray. From black to white, apply. Okay, great. So I can see now that there is some, of course, a satellite image that reflects somehow the mountainous area, uh, area or the mountainous region in the north. But what I can now achieve is some great visual effects. First of all, Let's go with the transparency and set the whole layer to transparent 40%. Now you can add some more visual impact to the whole scene in your map because this highlights the um, higher areas in the scene and minimizes the visual impact of the lower areas. You can also turn this around, remove the transparency from this layer, and add it at the transparency transparency to the base map to the satellite image. Let's have a look how this will turn out. Something similar. So I'll, I like the style. If you're adding some more, uh, some more contrast to the base map. So what we have learned today. First of all, you can apply the opacity of a layer by simply choosing transparency here and setting the global transparency you can assign a no data value sometimes you need to do this to assign minus 32768 but you can also choose to say the additional no data value is zero and we will not take the zero value on the edges as transparent layers so there are different ways of deal of dealing with transparency. The symbology is always governed by by the by an approach on how to convert a number in either one band, so a single band, or in three bands, to an RGB visualization. Visualization. Sometimes, if you have three, um, or or if you have a band for each color, for an R, a G, and a B, so red, green, and blue. Uh, then you can work out and, and uh, assign new colors and, and increase great visuals. And sometimes you just stick to one band, like in our uh, SRTM data here, where we need to assign a, trans a function on how to code the value of the height to a color or a gray, an amount of black, so a gray uh, color here in this, in this setting. And we have learned that you can play around with the minimum maximum value settings here to increase the visual impact and to differentiate different uh, parts of your data. By 
dealing with those values, I will switch back to 100%. You can also have a look on the raster tools here, on the raster toolbar in the dialog. That makes it even easier to switch between different settings. So there's this look, uh, local cumulative with the 2 and uh, 18, 89. Um, to the full extent, you can um, change this to a local histogram or to the full extent. You can enlighten the image, you can make it darker, you can enhance the contrast and so on. Everything else or all those, all these uh, buttons are more or less um, part of the symbology here where you can play around with the brightness, contrast, grayscale and so on and this stretches from minimum to maximum and so on. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or any comments you would like to make, just drop a line and I will answer them right away. Otherwise, thank you very much. Take care and goodbye.